If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the van on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. Alrighty, so we want to do our cladding next. So first things first, we want to take some measurements uh, using a tape measure. I know that I want my cladding to fit within this template here that's in the rear door. You may want yours to come all the way up to the rubber trim. If you do want it to come all the way up to the rubber trim, make sure it's not actually touching it um, because it will make it harder to close the door and also it will let water into the cladding and it will eventually rot it and cause it to mould. So make sure that your, whatever you're using, cladding, plywood, whatever, that you make sure it's a few millimetres in from the rubber trim and it's not touching it. So we're going to use a tape measure to measure it off at the widest point and this is 105.5 okay so I'm going to take this then to the chop saw to the mitre saw and cut it to 105.5 I'll bring it back and using a compass and a pencil we'll hold it up to these curves here and we'll use it to scribe an outline uh, with pencil and then later we we'll use that outline to cut it with a jigsaw and get the nice curves cut so it fits nicely within the template. Taking our tape measure, we're going to put it on one of the clad in, pull it out, and then make our mark where we want to cut with a pencil. Okay. So this is called a mitre saw, you might have heard it being called a chop saw. Uh, it's very important that you clamp your work down, you should have a little clamp here provided with it. Because um, if you don't, the teeth of the blade here will pick it up and I'll throw the piece away. So we're just going to bring it down and just check it's in line. Clamp it down. And there we go. I actually forgot about this tongue piece here showing um, at the top of all my cladding on the door so I'm going to take this piece off um, before I do the curve now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up and just see where it's coming up to the blade. Um, you can use this as a guide. You'll have some measurements here out in millimetres if you need to use it. Um, but this is basically just a guide fence that will just allow your workpiece to go through nice and straight. Um, we want our blade to be set just a little bit higher than the actual piece of wood itself and then we want our riving knife out which is going to prevent the wood from turning once it reaches the other side um, because if it does turn it can catch the teeth on the blade here and it can throw your workpiece right at you so uh, do be careful of that and obviously use uh, something like this to push your workpiece through and keep your fingers out of the way. So what we want to do after we've cut this out with the chop saw, uh, we want to check that it fits within the template. Okay, and we're going to take a pencil and a compass. We're going to take our workpiece, push it a little further along from the curve, making sure that it's still obviously nice and straight with the rest of the template here. Okay, and we're going to stretch it out until it reaches this side of the template where the curve is but also reaches the straight part of the wood here. Okay, mine's about there. And then we're just gonna follow it around, pushing the compass up, and that's gonna give us our outline. Okay, if you can see that just there, we're gonna take that to the jigsaw now, and we're gonna cut it out. So if you've got a little workbench or something like this, this is a great time to use it. Um, I'm using some clamps here for my workpiece. This is great, these are called quick grip clamps. Uh, it means you can hold your workpiece with one hand and then you just squeeze it and it will tighten up like this. You don't need clamps but it does make it easier to do the job. 
So that's firmly on one piece. So I'm just going to follow the outline with the jigsaw. And ideally you want a nice thin blade that can cut around tight curves. Um, this one's not ideal but I'm just using it now because it's all I've got. Um, so remembering to take off less rather than more, I'm now going to cut the curve. So just take your time when you're doing it. I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper here. If you've got the correct blade, you shouldn't get all the splintering at the end, but because I don't, I'm going to just sand the edges just very quickly. I'm going to take it back over to my door and just check that it fits. As you can see, it's not the best fit, so I'm going to take it back to the jigsaw and I'm just going to skim that little bit off the top. And there we go, I'd say that was a bit of a better fit, so we're now going to do the same on the other side and then we can start screwing it into place. Right, so I've cut both sides. Double check that it fits and that it does. So now we're going to screw it into place. Uh, before we screw it there, we're going to drill some pilot holes in um, to help the screw make its way through. Um, so you might be doing your walls, for instance, and you should have some, you probably have some wooden battens um, if you weren't worried about taking out any more width. Uh, because my fan is so small, I'm drilling straight into the metal parts. When I'm drilling into the metal, though, I'm making sure that it's obviously not going to come out the other side of the fan and leave a nice little hole. Um, so, yeah, making a note of where the attachment points are. I mean, we've got quite a lot of area up here. So I'm going to hold my workpiece up place and taking a drill bit which is designed to drill into metal and again it's smaller than the actual screws themselves. For this example these are uh, actually four millimeter wide screws and this is actually only a two millimeter wide drill bit so uh, it's actually only about half the size. Uh, I'm going to drill a pilot hole I'm just going to attach one area. I'm going to go over to this side here. You can see that. Okay, so I'm going to take our drill bit out. A uh, little tip if you want to change drill bits out quicker. It's obviously easier if you've got a second drill and then you can just have the other drill bit ready. But you can hold the chuck and then that will open it up a little bit quicker than you constantly turning it. So my counter sinks in place. I'm going to find where I put the pilot hole and I'm then just going to counter sink it. Let's check you can see that. So my drill's going quite fast now. Okay, I've got quite a big hole here for my counter sink because uh, later on, once the screw's in, I'm actually going to fill that with some wood filler, sand it flat, and I'm going to paint over it so you actually won't see any screws. Um, so now I'm going to uh, just just going to point out if you did want your screws showing, you might not have to do that it's quite so deep. You might need to think about how your screws are all lining up here if they are going to be on show. Like I said before, I'm going to be filling mine and painting over them so you won't see them, so it's not a problem here. But if you are allowing your screws to stay on show and you want the natural wood finish, then just make sure they're nice and in line so you get a nice finish. Um, also, you want to think about which screws you're using. Uh, brass screws can give quite a nice look, so you know, buy some brass screws. Um, if you want a silver look, use some stainless steel ones. Um, so here, we're now going to screw our piece of cladding in. And I'm actually doing it by hand. Um, the reason being is that uh, if you're using a drill to screw your screws in to the cladding with, um, you can find that once you get in really tight into the metal and the wood, that the screws then start pulling their way back out of the pilot hole and they actually tear a bigger hole out of the metal behind the cladding here. And then what happens is your screw will just keep turning and turning and turning. It's got nothing to bite onto. So by doing it by hand, we can fill the point and where it gets tight, but it's not so tight, it's going to pull the screw back out. So that's just one thing worth noting. So I'm going to finish this up and put two more screws up here. Um, the next pieces are going to be a little bit easier because 
both our sides here are nice and straight so it's just a case of literally taking it to the mitre slash chop saw and cutting it down to 105.5 um, and then just at the bottom here we'll have to do those two curves but this next bit should be pretty straightforward well, so we're just putting the door panels on and I've noticed a little bit of the insulation is showing through at the top here and over this side so I just want to reiterate the point that you need to keep your insulation back uh, just to say if you're doing this job where I'm having to take the panel off now and put some of the insulation back so um, just make sure that you keep it a bit lower than the border. If you remember when we were clearing out the inside of the van I had some panels here which were factory cut to size to fit in this template so if you have the same you could take those off and you could use those um, to draw an outline around your cladding with and pencil and uh, then cut it with a jigsaw and you know it's going to fit perfectly then that will save you a little bit of time instead of scribing around every single edge um, also you might notice in this van for example that this side is exactly the same as that side so once you've scribed out and cut all of this side you might as well unscrew it and use those pieces of cladding as a template to then draw around and cut these pieces of wood with so it saves you having to scribe two lots of wood but as you can see from this example, we had to clad our walls and then clad the door separately. But I wanted to make sure that the lines of the tongue and groove boards here stayed in line with each other. So for this example, I actually cut this bit right down uh, just to keep those lines nice and seamless and give it a nice finish. Of course, don't forget to consider that you're going to need to make holes for things like your door handle here. So I just used a hole saw piece again to cut this hole. Uh, I made a little rectangular cut here to allow the lock to come up and down. Again, another hole here for the 12 volt socket to sit. Um, all these things you just need to make sure that they can make their way through okay. You might find that there's some awkward uh, bits protruding. Uh, for this example here, I actually just cut a curve round and let that bit stick out because everything else was pretty much flush. So we've come across where the wires are coming out uh, to where our power management unit would be and uh, so for this bit here we've actually got some clips that clip onto the end of your plastic conduit here so it looks something like this. So this bit here will just literally uh, fold over onto the end of there like so and then you'll be able to close that all the way. So you'll have an end like this that will have a thread on it now. Um, and then what you can do is in your cladding here, you can drill a hole. And to do that you want to get a flat bit, which is like one of these. You want to look one of those up. And uh, you just hold it in place and you'll just you'll drill a, a nice uh, circle out. So just make sure you get one that's the right size. That's um, going to allow the, the, the thread to come through here. Um, but obviously you don't want the whole thing to come through otherwise it's not going to hold in place so um, so this bit will just thread through like it has here and then there's a little uh, at the end of it there that you can just screw in and it just makes it look quite tidy and it makes sure that the uh, cables are protected all the way to the cladding um, because obviously the conduit is connected to the end of that. Right so next up I'm going to be adding some cladding to the ceiling. Uh, remembering that we've got two lights here, I'm going to have to make an allowance for that and cut holes into my cladding. Uh, both these lights are running directly across the middle of the ceiling and so will our first panel of cladding. So what I'm going to do to cut the hole for the lights is I'm going to use a hole sort of piece. This one's a bit bigger this time. Um, so this is my light here. It's one of these touch sensitive LED lights. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the diameter of this bit is here. I believe it's 51 millimetres, but because I'm not sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test run. I've got a scrap piece of wood here, I'm going to drill into here and uh, make the hole and then I'm going to put my light in place just to check that it fits. So we've just put it into place and it fits nice and snug, so I'm going to carry on and I'm going to put two holes across my first piece of cladding so I can fit my lights in and then screw it into place. So another quick top tip, if you've got a couple of pieces or more that are going to be cut exactly the same, clamp them together and cut them all at once to save you some time. Right, as mentioned before with the walls, I've got some countersunk screws here that I'm going to fill a little bit later with some wood filler, sand back and paint over so that you can't see the screws and this will all be white. Uh, but for the roof I want to keep the pine effect, um, so I've actually gone for a different fixing here. Because these are the ones that are going to be on the show. Basically, there are just screws with washers behind them, so I'm going to show you how to do these next. Okay, so these are the fixings I'm going to be using. Uh, so for the screws, 
got some of these 8 by one inch. These are basically um, steel pan head screws. And then we've got some M5 washers here. Okay, so when we piece it together, they're going to look something like this. Hopefully you can see that without it blurring. Okay, so as I said before, because I'm going to leave the pine effect exposed and I'm going to leave the fixings exposed that's why I've gone for something that's a little different rather than the countersunk screws because I thought it gives it a nice aesthetic look so um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I've taken measurements already um, from where all of my battens are placed overhead on the ceiling and then I'm going to mark these out across the pine cladding boards in exactly the same places on each board um, so that they all line up really nicely. So for example, the first fixing point is 46 millimeters in from the right. So I've made a mark here and I've done the same. Down here there's one one centimeter from the right and there's another one here at 52.1 centimeters for myself. But just uh, measure out where your battens are. Uh, see, and then make a note of that on your pine cladding, okay? And then I'm just going to take, this is a square here, hold it up straight against the board and just draw a light line across my marks here. Same down here. Okay, and then I'm going to put two screws in at each fixing point okay apart from the end there's only one and uh, I'm going to pull them in at two centimeters in from each end so it's one at two centimeters another one there so this tells me exactly where I need to screw the screws in basically when I need to drill the pilot holes next. And this one's in the middle so I'm going to half the width of my board and make a mark. Okay. And so next we're going to take the drill bit designed to drill into wood and this is again smaller than the screw itself. We drill pilot holes because it stops the wood from splitting. If you just drill a screw straight through um, you'll run the risk of basically splitting the wood. So make our first pilot hole Same. do this all the way through Brilliant. so remember to keep your drill nice and straight as you're drilling the pilot holes out otherwise your screw is going to go in at an angle ok and then we're going to take that drill bit out which can be quite hot now we're going to take a flat bit, okay? So my washers, I know that the the diameter of it across the outside here is 15 mil, and this is a 16 mil flat bit, okay? Which is going to give a nice circular cut in here for this washer to fit into. Um, but that extra one millimeter will just allow it to sit inside, um, but obviously won't leave a massive gap as well. Um, so we're going to put this on the end of our drill. When I put this in here, I'm going to drill quite fast, um, but I'm not going to apply too much pressure because I found that it creates tear out around the rim of the circle. Okay, so we're just going to apply a little bit of pressure to let the speed of the drill do a lot of the work. So, I don't know if you can see that. We don't want to take too much out, we just want the washer to be able to sit in pretty much flush with the wood here um, and then the screw exposes. So I'm going to go around, do all of these and then we'll attach it to the battens and the ceiling next. If you do have any tear out, just take a light piece of sandpaper, this is 240 grit and just sand up and down the grain here just to clear it up. So now it's all cut out and we've got our holes here, we just need to slot this into place, this is all you need to do with tongue and groove. Just slot them in together. I might need to bend it, mold it in, but there we go. I'm going to check that this end is nice and flush, as well as the other end over here as well. Okay, I'm going to take our drill bit that's designed to drill into wood, and we're going to just drill up here 
a little pilot hole into the wooden batten here to fix it into. The same on the other one, we're going to do this to all the holes. Can the drill nice and straight and change the drill bit over. We're going to take our screw with our washer, put it on the end here and just screw it into place. felt that go up. Just make sure that as the screw is going in that you're pushing up with the drill uh, to make good contact with the head of the screw here otherwise you might tear the screw out. We're just going to go around and finish all of these off and then we're done. That's all the ceilings in now, I just need to sort out the sides here uh, but as you can see measuring out where these screws are going to go has really paid off. I know it seems like a bit of a ball leg but there's a nice finish at the end here and same on the other side as well. For the part where my walls and the ceiling meet, I'm going to corner those off and to do that I'm going to cut two 45 degree angles down each side of the cladding here. Um, so I've set, oh, set my table saw um, to a 45 degree angle as you can see here facing off that way and to do that I've just twisted this here and it's just released it and allowed me to pull it up. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run this through on both sides. Uh, with the rough side facing towards me. There we go. Two nice 45 degree angled edges. Next up I'm going to take some 240 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to smooth off the edges here out there going through the table saw. So I don't want to bevel the edges over, I still want them nice and sharp, but I want to take off any splinters. So I'm going to take this piece and uh, what we're going to do is going to be pressed up uh, like this. I did think about doing it the other way, which you can do if you want to, but the edges do show. So this gave a, a bit of a tighter fit. So I'm going to push this all the way to the edge here so it's flush with my last piece of cladding on this end. Okay. And then getting it roughly in place, I'm going to move over here and just make a mark where this piece of cladding ends and where this piece of cladding ends. And then we'll take it to the chop saw. Right, so we have our chop saw set up. I'm going to cut that angle, remembering always to take off less rather than more. Right, now we're going to take this back over to the van, check it fits, if not, shave off a little bit more until it does. I'm just going to sand off the edges here that I cut with the mitre saw. As you can see, I'm making good use of my awning poles again which are now holding that angled piece into place. So what I'm going to do now, get this shit down, is with that being held in place, I'm going to make sure that both this end and the other end over there are nice and flush of each other. And I'm going to draw a pilot hole. I think this is a three millimeter wood drill bit. And I'm going to be drilling into the cladding here. So I'm going to aim fairly low down on the piece of cladding on the angle here. Go. I can feel that go through the two pieces of wood. I'm going to use a different screw this time um, because we've got a little bit further to go than these screws which we're just screwing into the metal. Um, these are actually 40 millimeters so they're twice as long as these screws. So these are four millimeter wide, 40 millimeters long. I'm just going to then drill it into place. Okay, so I'm going to go along here and do it for you all along the uh, piece of cladding, uh, just making sure that it's nice and tight and snug up against the ceiling and the wall here so there aren't any gaps. Uh, and once I've done that, it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to unscrew it and then I'm going to countersink all of these screws so I can later fill them in and paint over it all. So I thought I'd show you guys the progress so far then. So we've got all our flooring in, the insulation's all done, we've got our wiring in. 
Um, pretty much all of the cladding is now being done and all the screws have been countersunk where I wanted them to be and we've done this nice finish here on all these screws at the top. Uh, we've got our overhead storage and the board there. Um, so we're making some pretty good progress. Um, so I've got to cut a window yet and finish off this storage bit. Uh, I'm going to box in the wheel arches as well. But then once those bits are all done, it's in a case of sort of building the furniture and that's the most exciting part because then you really see things starting to come to life. Right, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry on a few pieces, I'm going to use some wood filler to fill in all these screw heads on the cladding here. As mentioned before, I was going to paint over the cladding and I want my screw heads to disappear. So to do that, I'm going to fill them using this wood filler. Okay, this is a natural wood filler. This is the closest tone to the actual pine cladding itself. I'm going to be painting it anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but you can also get some in oak and other various different styles. So I'm just going to fill it above the cladding itself so that when I sand it back later to make it nice and flat uh, we're going to make sure that that hole is completely filled. So I'm going to go around all the screw heads on the cladding here and finish that. So like I said I'm just going to dip my finger in here okay, and I'm just going to fill the hole. Pushing the filler into the hole. Okay, There'll be some excess, that's fine. We just want to make sure that the hole is filled. Okay, And then we'll leave that to dry for a few hours and then you can sand it back. You all realise now that it was important that we did countersink all these screws all the way back because if any of the screw head is showing above the cladding obviously we won't be able to fill this hole properly and make it flush. So it's important in the earlier stages when you're countersinking all the screws into the cladding that the screw heads do go all the way in. Otherwise you'll have to unscrew them and then count the sink it again, which is just a bit of a pain to have to go back and do something again. Got my respirator on. <laughs> and uh, this is some 80 grit sandpaper. Okay, I'm just going to go around the edges now. I've left this to dry for a few hours. And we're just going to sand it so it's flush with the uh, cladding there. There's what it did look like, and that was, this is what it looks like now that we've sanded it back. Um, so you can see there are a few little holes uh, in this one here, so I might go back over this and just fill it again with a little bit of filler, um, and then you can wait for it to dry and sand it back again. Okay, So you can do that on the few that have got little holes in. Some of these are okay though, so I won't need to do all of them, but we're just going to go around now and finish all of these. If you've uh, got any holes where you were perhaps trying to drill a screw in earlier on, Now's a good time to fill these as well, so that they can be covered. Also, if you had any holes already existing in your wood just from when you bought it, you could also fill these at that at this point as well. So next up then we're going to paint our cladding. But before we do this I want to mask off all the edges around the cladding just to make sure I don't get any paint um, going onto the van's paint job. So um, it's really important that you make sure that this part is really good, that your prep work's good. Um, because it will affect your final paint job, you want to make sure that the uh, masking tape you're using is going right up to the edges of the cladding, otherwise you will get an overlay of paint. It's really time consuming this job, but it's worth doing it properly. So if you're trying to get some of your tape right down into these edges, you can take a key or something and just run it round the edge just to make sure it's... Which that wasn't, so it's good to check. Right, so you also want to make sure that your floor is masked off as well. As you can see I've done all the edges here. Anywhere where you don't want paint to go, just make sure it's all covered. All the masking tape's been done now. I've put this on the floor just to protect it in case any paint comes down. Uh, I'm also wearing some pretty crappy clothes just in case I get some paint on me. So I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. I'm able to open that up. I've got a scrap piece of wood here that I'm going to use to stir it. You can use whatever you like, just as long as it's a good 
give this a good stir and then we can apply it onto our cladding. For anyone who's interested, this is white cotton paint. And this is from the Dulux Easy Care range. Um, it's quite good because it's washable, so if you get any stains, which you will do in such a small environment, it's really easy to then wipe off without taking the whole paint job off. So it's probably worth getting something that's slightly harder wearing for a camper when you're in such close proximity to the walls all the time. So I've got quite a large paintbrush because I'm doing such large areas, um, but you can get a smaller one if you've got some more delicate areas to do, or detailed areas, should I, should I say. So we just want to make sure that our area is nice and clean, that there's, um, I've already given it a good wipe, just make sure that none of the um, sanded wood filler is still present on any of the wood here. Okay, so just make sure your surface is clean, and then you can apply the paint. And we're going to do it side to side across the cladding here and then you've got to leave this one to dry for it says two to four hours on here it's quite a warm day so you could probably do it for a couple of hours and do another coat um, but just follow the instructions on the back of your paint tin for that top tip once you finish painting you can wrap this in cling film if you plan on using the same paintbrush again with the same paint um, and you can leave that overnight, just make sure it's wrapped up nice and tightly and then the paint won't dry. Saves you having to clean it more time. So you, if you've got plywood on your walls, you can use a roller to save you some time. So yeah, I'm just going to do a side to side motion. And we'll just follow this all the way around because we've masked off all the areas properly we don't have to worry about any paint going over the edges right, so after two coats um, that was enough so I've let it dry overnight uh, I've just removed the masking tape made sure that all the lines are nice and sharp I'll go back over a couple of little areas with a small detailed paintbrush and just um, touch those bits up um, but it's all good, all ready to go. So next up we're going to box in the wheel arches. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album and need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy. She does all that she can You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come back around So don't let the bastards get